Hey booktube, it's Kim at middle of the book march. This is a video I've been um, considering doing for a while and it is special to me because these are books that I've been collecting a, a one or two at a time and I have a few special places that I go where I find them and acquire them and uh, these were all, no, I'm, I've already lied. All but two of them were purchased in person at used bookshops or library sales. So come on and keep watching if you're interested. So first off, I have to say I've got a weird glare because I'm sitting at my dining room table in order to hold these books. They're heavy because as the title of the video implies, these are books in slipcases. And I've been, like I said in my intro, I've been slowly collecting these. Um, and with the exception of two of them, which are the first ones I'm going to show you, I've found them in used bookshops or library sales. So uh, let's get going. Now, the first one is going to come as no surprise to anybody. But let me show you this first. This is the actual slip case. And it's kind of in rough shape. It's a little beat up. It's a little brown, kind of dirty. But the book inside is Middlemarch by George Eliot. You, you're not surprised. Here is the actual book. And it's got, the, it's got blue um, edge, edges on the top and then the, the regular paper. Um, what, why do you ask, am I collecting books in slipcovers? because typically they are classics or modern classics and they're collector books. They're books that you collect and put on your shelf. What does, what's the point of the slip case? The slip case protects the book. And even as beat up as this one is, and this is just a regular old light blue cardboard, some of them are very decorative, that one is not. But look at how pristine the book is. The papers are clean, there's no mold, there's no mildew, there's no aging, at least in this one. This particular book is a Folio Society edition from 1972. And look at the illustration. I absolutely, and of course it's Middlemarch. I mean, uh, my channel title, hello. So this is a Folio Society um, 1972 edition. And it's got illustrations throughout. Let me see if I can quickly find one or two. Uh, and I'm not, oh, here's one. Wait, here's one. These are all in black and white. And they're peppered throughout the novel. Um, I just love when I have a classic hardcover book. This is on very nice paper. Um, the print is easy to read. Progressives. Um, so it's just been a joy to find some of these in different used bookshops because I can go online and purchase a Folio Society um, special edition. The, the one that I went, I went to the Folio Society website and Middlemarch, I think, was $125. This copy I found online and I think it was in the $25 range. So that's more my speed. And it goes, oh, that didn't work. It goes back in the slip cover. And, and yes, I will read these copies. These are not just going to stay on a shelf without me touching them. Yes, they are collector's versions for me because I think they're so beautiful, but I will read this version. I've got several versions of Middlemarch in different formats. Yes, I will pick that up and I will read that one. So they're not just going to languish on a shelf somewhere. I'll actually pick them up. The next one is another George Eliot. Again, this is an older, beat up, very plain looking slipcase. Um, it's, got, it's got a lot of wear on it. But which book is it? Uh, Silas Marner by George Eliot. So, and see how easy that comes out of the slipcase. And this is an older book. So it does have um, aging on the edges. But again, it's very clean. 
Um, and to, the book itself is in wonderful shape. This one is a Heritage Press version. I have several Heritage Press books. This one was printed in England and it doesn't have a print date in it. So that's, I'm assuming it's quite a bit older than the Folio Society edition that I just showed you from 1972. And again, this one has illustration illustrations peppered throughout. Here's one of the illustrations at the heading of a chapter. Um, I love this because this print is super big and the margins are wide. So this is absolutely a version of Silas Marner that I will read. I will pick this one up and read it for sure. I wish I could find a published date on this particular version. Um, all it says is, all it says at the bottom is printed in England. And yeah. Silas Marner itself was published in 1861. This book is not that old, of course. But it is an attractive copy. It's in great shape. The paper is um, has a little tiny bit of aging on the top edges, but it's, it's in gorgeous shape. And again, I will put it in the slipcover for protection only, not for untouchability. And until... I read Silas Martyr, which is actually coming up in May. May is for our George Eliot selection is going to be Silas Martyr. So I could in fact pick up this version. I also have all the paperwork versions of George Eliot's books. So those are the two Eliot books I have. What's the next one? Oh, this is a good one. Um, I went to a my, my local used bookshop is about 20, 30 minutes from me. And he has an online presence as well, an online store. And he listed a set of books, all in slipcases. They're all Heritage Press versions. Um, and he had an entire set of eight books for $60, oh no, eight, eight books. He was listing each book at $9, so that's $72. Um, I went to the shop to check them out in person and I wanted to get the set and he told, he sold me the entire set of eight books for $60. And these are Heritage Press versions of Charles Dickens novels. This is the Pickwick Papers and that's the spine of the book, which is so pretty. And they all have the same um, design. Again, very plain slipcase, nothing special to it, but the actual book is just gorgeous it's it's in perfect condition red edges on the top um the pickwick papers was charles dickens first novel and he published it when he was 24 years old um let's see the front here's another this illustration is in color this is that's another advantage of of collector's versions books is the illustrations. The slipcase books usually have those. Um, again, this one doesn't have a publication date in it. I could find it online, but the book is just in gorgeous condition. Oh, oh, hold on. 1938 by Heritage Press. Can you see that? You can't see me. This, these versions are 1938 versions, um, and they have illustrations at the chapter headings. I'm just, again, really big print. <laughs> so, like I said, um, gorgeous condition. This book, you know, was eight, seven fifty for each of these hardcover slip cased versions. But an interesting thing is I went to a library sale, um, I don't know, a few weeks back and found a version of, I believe I found David Copperfield, which was one of the books in the set that was not included for a dollar. <laughs> for a dollar for a Heritage Press slipcased edition. It was a little torn, not torn, but it was a little wrinkly on the spine, but otherwise in perfect condition. So of course for a dollar, I got that one. But here's an interesting thing. In that set of books that I bought at the bookshop 
were two copies of the Pickwick papers. So I am giving away the second copy. Here's the other one. It's also in the same condition. It's the spine is unbroken. The pages are straight and gorgeous. Um, it's got, you know, the good print with, <laughs> with big margins. If anybody would want this copy, this is a, this is a free giveaway. Please let me know in the comments and then we can we can correspond privately. And unfortunately, I would only be able to ship this in the United States. So if you would like this double copy, um, please let me know. And the first person who responds to that, I will send those to send that to you. What's the next one here again? Here's one. It's a beat up, beat up slip case, very plain. Now, I'm gonna back up. Why am I bothering to create this type of content? Why am I showing you slip cased books? I think I told you a little bit in the beginning of the video. I, they're collectible classics of books that I've either read and loved or want to read, and I will not just let these sit on a shelf. I will read these versions. Because when I pick up a classic book in a, in a physical format that is almost perfect as, as in unread, clean, great print, illustrations, it's just a joy. There's, there's a, a specific joy in reading that book. And the fact that it's in a slipcase just keeps it so gorgeous and beautiful. This one is one of my favorite classics I've ever read, and this is Flaubert's Madame Bovary. This is the story of Emma Bovary, who was the daughter of um, Dr. Bo Charles Bovary's uh, patient, and it, the Dr. Bovary went to the farm to treat his patient and saw Emma, the daughter, the farmer's daughter, um, and kind of got a crush on her and started coming back to his patient a little too often. Um, Bovary's wife died and Emma Bovary became his second wife. Emma was not happy with a small town provincial marriage and uh, eventually went on to lifelong des destruction. And that's all I'm going to say. These are all classics, so the stories are already out there. This one is another... Heritage Press, and this one is 1950. Title page with illustration, um, special version. And let's see if I can find, yep, here's an illustration. And again, look at the wide margins and the great big print. <laughs> I originally read this copy, I used to have a very old beat up version of Madame Bovary. And that's how I consumed it the first time. But this one, and I've since, I don't know what happened to that copy. I no longer have it. I will absolutely pick up this one and reread Madame Bovary. And I don't know if anybody has seen the film of that, but that was very good as well. So uh, I was so happy to find this one. This is the price sticker. And I think he sold this to me for $7.50. So... I really am enjoying finding slipcased books from the Heritage Press because they're just so beautifully designed. And again, the slipcases are nothing to write home about. Um, and these are old, so they're beat up and they're aged and they're yellowed. This one is Wilkie Collins, The Woman in White. And look at how gorgeous that spine is. There's a little bit of aging on the top, but the rest of the pages are perfect. This doesn't, I don't even know if these books, any of these books have been read, but it's such a pretty hardback. And this one is again, the Heritage Press. Let's see if I can find a date on it. 1964. I love the title pages. I love the illustrations and oh, I'm just, <laughs> I could just sit here and read these books and look at the pictures, but I have to talk to you guys because I decided to, um, to do a video about these books and show them to you and hopefully you get the gist of how happy I am and how, how just, I don't know. I just, the, this, per, this causes joy. I love, I love these books. 
And I love the opportunity that, that I have to just pull them off my shelves and read them. Now, Wilkie Collins, the woman in white, was um, kind of a early example of a kind of a detective novel. Um, let's see, I'm gonna, I'm scrolling, here we go, I'm scrolling down. Let me, I'm gonna read a quote from the book as to how and why um, it's titled The Woman in White. In one moment, every drop of blood in my body was brought to a stop. There, as if it had that moment sprung out of the earth, stood the figure of a solitary woman, dressed from head to foot in white. And it's kind of an early example of gothic horror psychological realism. And uh, this was Wilkie Collins' fifth novel, published in 1859. And I, look, I haven't read Wilkie Collins yet. I also have the Moonstone on my shelf in a paperback version. And um, who knows which one I'll read first. But it's almost like when I take these out of the, the slip cases, the boxes, I don't want to put them back in. But I have a couple more books to show you. So I'm going to put this one back in. And uh, pick that up another time and read that one. This one is um, in, a, again, a plain mustard yellow slip case. Nothing special about it. It's in decent shape. It's a little scuffed here and there. This is one of my favorite American classics authors is Nathaniel Hawthorne. And this is Twice Told Tales, a collection of uh, short stories and his short form writing. Oh, this is so pretty. <laughs> it's a little bit of a little bit of aging on the top, but it's such a, a pretty book. Um, yeah, the rest of the page edges are white and gorgeous and clean. And this one is um, Heritage Press. I think I think the majority of these are, but one of the things I almost didn't even notice is is all of these versions have introductions by famous authors or academics. This one is introduced by Wallace Stegner, who is one of my favorite modern classics authors. Uh, the Angle of Repose is one of my favorite books of all times. And I, I just noticed that after I purchased the book. This one is copyrighted 1966. Um, there's a an introduction picture. And I mean, come on, look at the look at the text, look at the font size and the margins. This is gonna be a pleasure to read. But <laughs> These are Nathaniel, uh, an example of Nathaniel Hawthorne's short stories, along with the beautiful book in the slipcase um, from the Heritage, from the Heritage Edition versions. And I think I'm not sure if these come with no, because it's a it's a proprietary thing. This is called a sand glass, and this is a little paper um, from the Heritage Club that describes the book, and it's it's kind of like a little pamphlet. And it comes with these editions, and it describes the, the the book. It gives background on the author, has a little bit of commentary, and it's it's almost like it's almost like an introduction to a book. But they they created these in their own little paper slips that they put inside um, the book. And several of the versions that I have acquired so far include that, and some of those are are pretty old. So, and then the last ones I'm going to show you is a two volume set. Um, that's just the mark on the slip case. It's just a plain black kind of beat up on the bottom. Um, I saw these in my, my used bookshop um, on, in his online store. Actually, he posted to Facebook and said, I have these versions. And I saw them and I said, I want them because <laughs> they're gorgeous. And he had two he had two of each of volume one and two. Um, and one was a little more beat up than the other one. And I, I posted on Facebook, I would like one set. And he put, he picked out the two in the best condition and he sold me those. So this was a Christmas gift to myself along with some other books. But this is a two volume set of Victor Hugo's Les Miserables. And it's volume one and two, but they it contains the entire novel. Volume one or number one has volumes one, two, and three in it. 
and two has volumes four and five in it. And I just, I picked them up after he bagged them for me and just almost cried with glee because this is the actual hardback. The pages are just gorgeously clean. There's no molding, no very little aging. There's just a, a little yellowish coloring, but just the hardback, the naked hardback to this book. Again, this is a heritage edition. It has the sand glass right inside the front cover. Um, and that's usually where I find them. Again, New York Heritage Press. And this one is 1938. Um, there's, each one has an introduction. Here's a uh, Fantine. This is the first illustration for the first section. And I can't tell you how much I love the wide margins and the giant font. <laughs> it's just, it's glorious for those of us in middle age with the glasses that I have. Um, this is almost going to be a pleasure to read. And I've been looking, for, I've never read Les Mis. And I've been really looking forward to it. I also have the Penguin Deluxe Edition paperback, which is enormous. I think Robert at Barter Hordes is, re is finishing that book right now. And I know of all the reviews of everybody that has read it, it it's, it's a love it or hate it. It's an enormous book. Um, Hugo can get extremely long-winded. I know, I've, I've heard all the reviews. Here's the other copy, number two. Um, yeah, and I'm gonna, I'm still gonna read it. It's, it's a bucket list book. So I'm, I'm probably gonna pick up this copy what, when I compare it to the paper penguin paperback and see if the font, who whichever has the biggest font wins. So those are my slip cased books. And whenever I go used book shopping, especially in stores and shops that have antiquarian books or antique books, I always look for the slip cases and I want to see if there are any classics that I've either loved and want to collect the book for or if I haven't read it yet and I it's on my TBR, it's on my bucket list, then I will acquire it. And quite honestly, I don't have a huge book budget. I don't spend a lot of money on brand new volumes of books. Um, and I have to be careful of that. So I am pretty thrifty. These books have been so easy to acquire. Um, I have no guilt with buying a collectible book and putting it on my shelf to make it look beautiful. And again, I, I will read them. I'm not, I'm not there to buy things I'm not going to use. So these have provided me joy and I hope you enjoyed me showing them to you. I hope you enjoyed which titles that I have bought so far. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you want a copy of the Pickwick Papers, I will send it to you domestically. Let me know in the comments. The first one who says they want it wins. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.